Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at simple linear regression. So let's start with an example. Um, as you can see, this pond is completely overgrown with algae, uh, which indicates that it's quite nutrient rich. Because we know from, from literature, we know that if you have a lot of phosphates in the water, which is a very important macronutrient, um, then algae can bloom, just the way we see in this picture. Uh, so we wanted to test this in the field. So what we did was we visited um, several ponds, independent ponds that were scattered uh, across a nature reserve. And then we took samples of the water and we analyzed the concentrations of phosphates in the water. And also we looked at the density of algae dissolved in the water. Um, so first let's just attach the data set and take a look. So what we have here is we have ID. This is the ID, the identity of the pond. So we have 12 different ponds. Um, they're all independent. And then for each pond, we have measured the concentrations of phosphates uh, and also the density of algae. And we wanted to know whether there was a linear relationship between these two um, variables. So let's first look at the data frame and we have to check whether everything is, has been defined correctly. Um, so both phosphates and density of algae are numeric. Uh, so this is okay. This is what we need. For linear regression, there are several assumptions. The first assumption is that um, the relationship between your two factors has to be linear and also causal. Of course, this is a bit weird, um, this assumption, because we're going to test for linearity of the relationship. Um, but you can also you can only test for uh, this relationship if you already know that it is linear. So what does this mean? This means that you cannot have, for example, um, an optimum curve or you cannot have anything else that looks like more or less a linear pattern. So if we plot, if we make this very quick scatter plot and we look at phosphates on the x-axis and algae density on y-axis, we see that there's more or less some linear relationship. So this relationship is not humpback shape, for example. This is very important because otherwise you would violate a very important assumption before you can actually test for the regression. The second assumption is in the independence of the residuals. Um, now this means that in our case, uh, we sampled independent, so different ponds. We didn't take two samples in one and the same pond. We didn't do that because then you would violate the assumption of independence. So we sampled uh, in total 13, 12, sorry, 12 different ponds. So this assumption has also been met. Now for the, th the third and the fourth assumption, first we have to build our model because we need our model residuals to actually um, check if this assumption has been met. So the code for linear, simple linear regression is actually very simple. I've called this model lin model, and then you just type LM, which means of course linear model. And then we say we want to look at algae density versus phosphates. And then we define our data frame. Um, and then we just call the summary and that's it. <clears throat> so this is the output. So first we're, we're, we have to take a look at the, the p-values, which indicate significance. In this case, both are intercept and also phosphates are significant. So if we have to write down the model in a paper, for example, then our model would be y equals uh, the intercept, which is 0.04 more or less, plus um, 0.115 times x. Now, in this case, y, of course, equals algae density and x equals the concentrations of phosphates. So we can predict um, the density of algae based on phosphates. So this is already good. But now, of course, we have to check two more assumptions. Uh, the first assumption is that the distribution of uh, the model residuals is normal. So for that, we, we can just call a very simple um, normal quantile plot. What we see here is that our dots are scattered more or less around this line. There's no uh, huge deviations from the line, so it's more or less straight. Uh, this, so this looks good. If you're in doubt, you can also um, do a Shapiro test, shapiro wilk test for normality. And if the p-value is higher than 0.05, which is the case, then you can assume that you're looking at a normal distribution. And then the fourth assumption uh, is the most difficult one. That's the homogeneity of variance. 
So for that we can call the first plot of the model. Um, and what you don't want to see is, for example, is a triangle or uh, highly truncated data. So in this case, it looks more or less reasonable. There's no reason to assume that there's no homogeneity of variances. Um, so we can assume that our four assumptions have been met. So the linear model that we just built is valid. Now I've just already drawn the scatter plot with this very simple code, but of course you can make it a bit nicer. And for that we use the ggplot package. Um, and then the code is quite simple. What I did in this code is I also asked for um, drawing of the 95% confidence interval. So here you see the linear regression line and then you see the 95% confidence interval. So we can conclude that um, the concentrations of dissolved phosphates has quite a significant and quite a strong effect on the density of algae in the pond. So this is it for a simple linear regression. If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel.